Are we doing it? Are we doing it? No, you're looking <laughs> awesome. Are okay. we looking awesome? <laughs> looking awesome. Fantastic. Okay. Welcome to Between the Sheets with Pamela and my interview with Marita van der Feyther. Did I pronounce that correctly? Perfect. Because you know I don't speak any Afrikaans. No, no, no. It could be Marita, but my French is Marita. Marita, so Marita van der Feyther. It's good. Oh, fantastic. Because, I mean, the only thing I can say in Afrikaans is Khan Kak and Demilis. Well, my husband can say Di Babi to Slap, <laughs> which is the baby mm -hmm. sleeps. And a few swear words because we have very nice swear words in Africa. You do. You have the best. The best. You do have the best. I sound like Trump, the best. <laughs> <laughs> and on that note, let's start off with Clitlet. Yes. <laughs> let's start off. We're between the sheets. We are between so. the sheets. So we should discuss that because I saw that phrase and I was just in absolute hysterics. And is that a is that a thing? Is that a genre? It was not something that I was specifically aware of or that I did a lot of research, but the Afrikaans and it's a very rude word in Afrikaans, but I can only say it now because, because you're English and you don't understand. Good no, I got that. Yes, okay, you got that. <laughs> um, and that's really so. Uh, with the translator and I, we were trying to think of something that could, you know, that could get that. Yeah, and yeah. I thought Kitlet was actually. I, I have to say. Afterwards, I found out they said there is a genre. There like is that. a genre. Yes, well, so it must yes. be like Fifty Shades of Grey. Yes, and exactly. Uh, actually, more more hard, more hardcore. I think. <laughs> Lord. Very soft. Okay. But so okay, he's he does soft porn, you know, the, the character in the book. Mm -hmm. I, I have to say that your translation is brilliant. I'm, I'm so glad you say so. Thank you so much because I also think it's a it's a really good translation. I've been working with Annalise Fisser. Uh -huh. I've been working with her it's the fourth book. And you know, you get to really know. I think she gets mm, me now gets completely. Mm. She she says it the way I would have said it in English. She writes it in English, so I really love that. And, and good editing too. Your sense of, I mean, your sense of humor, that I absolutely loved it. And like I was saying to you, I, I mean, I was reading bits out to my poor, long-suffering husband um, because I was finding bits of it just so hilarious. How different is the sense of humor, English, Afrikaans, French? Is there a difference? Well, you know, it took me m many, many years um, to have any kind of sense of humor in <laughs> In France, because um, yes, because I was just not proficient in the language, and okay. to, I could understand it, but I couldn't be witty. I couldn't be. I couldn't have repartee. You know, I couldn't answer that kind and of. And they speak you know. very quickly. Don't and they, they speak quickly, but it's just humor is a very particular thing. But Afrikaans English, it's it's fine. You know, that doesn't yeah. bother me because sometimes I do word play in Afrikaans puns that you that you can't do. So a little bit of that you lose in the English, but. Surprisingly, sometimes you come up with a pun in English that you didn't have in Afrikaans to make up for. Okay. So it's okay. Kind of even All right. Fun. I think on at that point we should read this bit that I was just killing myself laughing about. Yes, because Willem after all is not a clit lit writer. Is he uses this the pseudonym of Lolita Meyer because he wants mm. to be a serious writer. Serious writer. And I, um, I love all those bits as well. Like the, the bit, I mean, I could actually read the whole book <laughs> no. aloud, but well, we would be there for a while. Okay, so he's trying to explain to his publisher. You lost me, Willem thinks. Misunderstanding, miscommunication. He waits until the dessert arrives before it tries again. Isabel didn't order and quickly excuses herself to go and smoke a cigarette. It's his last chance, Willem decides. After this, he'll throw in the towel. I'm thinking of writing a book about a writer who wants to write himself off, he says looking at the mini abstract sculpture on his plate, somewhat disconcerted. He wanted an ordinary creme brulee, but this is evidently the sort of restaurant where ordinary doesn't exist. He takes a careful bite. He tastes of thyme and rosemary. I like the play on words, Martin says, nodding. Writer, right off. It wasn't deliberate, Willem realized, surprised. Martin has ordered millefeuille or pomme d'amour, love apples, with salted butterscotch. Her plate looks even more breathtaking than his, but she unceremoniously smashes the artful creation and starts eating it without pause. He wants to do it to promote his career, Willem admits. It's the only way he'll ever make it onto any bestseller list again. That's what always happens when a writer or a singer dies. Martine looks up but says nothing. She just reaches for a wine glass again. So he plans a posthumous, a glorious posthumous career. All sorts of unpublished manuscripts waiting in his drawer to be discovered. Are you serious? Martin asks with an incredulous little laugh that ends in hiccups. 
Would you read such a book? Is there sex in it? It's not really that sort of book. I'll read it if there was enough sex in it. Hmm, the problem is the writer is in a foreign city, outside his comfort zone, perhaps locked inside a hotel room. Locked in sounds good. Could you bring chains into it as well? No, Martin, Willem says firmly, I'm not talking about S and M. What I mean is he may have locked himself away to think about his life. In a hotel room? Something like that, an impersonal, unfamiliar space, so he can decide what to do. I'll tell you what he can do. He summons a few prostitutes. A hotel <laughs> room is perfect for that. No, that's not what he wants to do. It's not that sort of book. He shakes his head in frustration and pushes his plate away, half of the creme brulee left untouched. Martine's own plate is now looking like an art gallery where a bomb has exploded, complete with splotches of red sauce that could represent blood. So how are you going to bring sex into the story? Is that all his publisher can think of? Willem studies her, with, studies her with a puzzled frown. If she weren't so clearly pickled, he could, have he could have sworn she was sending herself up. I don't know, Martini says with a sigh. He could jerk off or watch porn on television or whatever. That's not the point of the story. So what is the point, William? Willem stares longingly at the last bit of wine left in the bottle and replies whether he's going to do it or not. I love that! I love it! I love it! I love it! Oh, that, I mean, I, as you saw, I keep laughing at that, but I just, I love that sort of, have you ever had that experience where you try to pitch something? Not in, well, not that kind of book. <laughs> <laughs> not that total misunderstanding, yeah. No, no, no. I, but I, I mean, I could, I could imagine, I could imagine that kind of, the whole book is a, a, about a lot of misunderstandings and and and, and from the very personal ones um, you know between father and son and mm. ex-wives mm. and up to the big misunderstandings when the terror attacks come in um, you know I suppose the ultimate misunderstanding would be between cultures between people who start who can't talk anymore cultures and religions and you just start knowing talking past each other yes, and, yes, then, mm. yes, and, and, and talk to me about writing from a male POV how did you find that I was very scared initially I don't know why now because um, but I thought most of my books have been written from a female point of view at least the main protagonist mm -hmm. usually being female and then I thought you know, I'm being boxed. I'm boxing myself now into woman's writer. Mm -hmm. And I don't like, I always, I do different genres. I do children's books. Mm. So I thought, no, 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 it's time to, you know, punch a hole in this little box. Um, so, and in the end, actually, I, it was much, it's never easy, you know. No, no characters, easy. But it wasn't nearly as difficult as I thought it would be. Because I also write um, youth literature, young mm -hmm. adult stuff. Mm -hmm. And that... It's much more difficult to get into the head of a 15-year-old um, slam writing mm, young mm. boy who's cross with his dad. Anyway, anyway, we were talking about male POV, and I was just saying that I think you did a brilliant job. I, uh, you know, I totally believed it, and I loved the character of Maurice. And I found, I mean, only, obviously, I'm only halfway through, but I found like that whole bit so poignant about him wanting a father, and then not sure if yes. this was the kind of father he wanted, and. And I thought you captured that because obviously I have a teenage boy yes. who's editing this. Yes. Hi, honey. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I yes. thought you you captured that that vulnerability and you're trying to be tough and. Yes, thank you very much because I, I it was a character that also really grew on me. Um, for his language, I actually looked at you know you steal little bits and pieces. So I look at my own son who's now 25, and and speaks. Afrikaans with, or English with French slang. Um, oh, wow. Because I was afraid it would sound pretentious, you know, Maurice, you know, it can very easily. People use little French words in between, but he needed it. it I love that. that needed that. I love yeah. that. So I just mm. listened to the way, the way Daniel talks. <laughs> it's my son, and I, and I got, you know, that helped. And then talk to me about the Paris attacks, because I just I skipped yes. to the acknowledgements. Yes. I mean, obviously, I yes. haven't got to that bit yet. No spoilers. Yes. No spoilers, Mr. Yes. But no, no, no. With the Paris attacks, because I mean, people do know that it it, it is on the. Yes. You know, we yeah. Do, I had to put it on the blurb. Um, so that happens about um, you know that's twenty three chapters. I think around about chapter seven. So up to then, it's exposition. You get to know the characters, mm -hmm. 
a little bit from the ex-wives because there's one ex-wife already. I gave all three his ex-wife a chance. Um, and then, yeah, they have to say it's fair. Well, I see, yes. And the children too. Um, and then the, the, the Paris attacks happen and I think things speed up um, because they have a no escape. They actually... No, 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 no. Okay, nothing more. <laughs> nothing more. Um, just tell me though, how was it writing that? Was it... It was quite hard technically because I it's a real event that you work with. So you have to be very um, careful in your research. So you know, get the timeline right first of all. And then I actually, you know, and I went to Paris and I, I, I there's a metro, uh, mm. a ride on a metro that I described with people coming in and I went. I had to go on that metro. I had to go and see how far is it from this restaurant to the metro station, would they be able to hear the gunshots going oh, down? Wow. You know, okay, so that thing. kind of yeah. research. Yes, oh, so, and, actually, and then for two days after after the attacks, Jackie and Willem, they go, they, they, they wander through this traumatized Paris, which was an opportunity to write about Paris, you know, because everybody has written about Paris, mm. so, in another way, because it's mm. not the touristy Paris, it's a kind of, it's a, it's not the cliche Paris. It's a real Paris. It's it's a, a real Paris. Yeah, it was yeah. a traumatized Paris, and and for that also I had to do quite a bit of research. We could do a lot with videos and so to actually see what it was like those two days afterwards, immediately afterwards, mm. you know, the mm. monuments and the restaurants and all the flowers and the candles and the, and the okay. things. All right, we're going to take a total turn and talk about your process. Talk to me about process, how it works. Everyone always loves to know. The process of writing. Yes. It's hard work. <laughs> <laughs> Don't well, do it. People think it's yeah, very little glamour. It's not every day that yeah, you get to bed with bed glamorous with each other. people. Usually it's bloody hard work. Mm. Yeah, but you know that. And I think the hardest work, um, what is it that, that um, Deborah said today, a woman who interviewed me, um, easy reading is hard writing. You know, that if you want to be accessible, if you want to write in I a way... I love that! Because yeah. I get so sick of yes. people going, oh, but it's not oh, literary. No, 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 no. It's, a, it's the most difficult. And I always quote Herman Charles Bosman there, one of the guys I also look up to, mm. because he could make it sound Sounds so cool. easy mm. as we were just sitting in a bar. First guy we ever yeah. studied at varsity. Yes. Now, and he said the challenge is to make it seem seamless. Mm. And I think that is a... It's very hard work to hide the scenes. You know, like a very good tailor. Um, mm. uh, uh, you look at the garment and... I wouldn't know because the nun used to slap me on the face. <laughs> last, last thing. What kind of encouragement would you give to an aspiring writer in apart terms from of... don't do it. Apart from don't do it. So okay, so if you really, really, really want to write, stop talking about it. Get your bum on a chair and start writing give yourself a, f a few hours a day or a certain amount of words a day and just do it i think really and then be be prepared to bleed <laughs> and write it over and over again and how much do you write per day do you have a i don't have a word count i have an hour count i basically when i'm really sitting down and write a book it's eight hours a day it's like a nine to five job i sit there and i and i and, I write. and you really have time yes as well. yes and you know, in some days you have thousands of words in those eight hours, and some days it's like two sentences that you write over and over and over, mm -hmm. and you can't get right. So that's why it's difficult for me to 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 get a word count. But I do know. But that's what works for yes, you for the hours. Okay, and I think that's it. Thank you, Marita van der Pepe, for. I was about to say we're getting between my sheets, but I'm between mm -hmm. yeah. her sheets. Yes. So well. yes, and this is her book. You lost me, and I'm not going to translate Afrikaans. Misverstand. There Which means misunderstanding. Thank you. It is lovely so going much. to bed with you. <laughs> <laughs> Unless he stands there and takes it from the top. Then mm -hmm. he has no, but he has to stand on the bed. <laughs> Say hi. Hi.